All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with the Dino King Barracuda. This is quite a vice. I was in the market for a new rotary vice, and you got a couple options. You've got the Renzetti vices. Uh, Peak is a newer, a newer manufacturer, but they make very, very nice vices, as far as I can tell. And then, apart from those two. Dyna King is one of the only others making rotary vices that have any real history. Uh, they are built like a tank. I, I just can't get over how solid this thing is. I decided to go with this because everyone that I talked to about it had just nothing but good things to say. And most of those people were... Tying saltwater flies. And I will say, this is a monstrous vice. Like, it is just... The bobbin hanger out of the way. Just from front to back, it is just large. So if you want something petite on your fly tying desk, this is not what you want. Because it is just a big piece of metal. And, you know, I guess that does inspire confidence <laughs> in one way. So if that's part of your criteria for what's good, what's bad. This is definitely a giant hunk of solid metal. It also has a... I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. There's a detent lock right there for when you close the vise. Gives you a really nice, satisfying click. That is... That might be my favorite part of it. I just... I want a vise that is going to open and close sharply and smartly like this does. It just... Uh, it just everything about it just works. It's not flashy, but everything about it just works and it's rock solid. So, just a quick look at what it's got going on here. You've got your rotary mechanism. This is your tension screw for your rotary mechanism. Loosen it up. You're totally swinging free, and there are some very serious bearings in here in this shaft because this thing just—it's so nice and smooth. It is, it's just a joy to work with. Like, I, I I can't say enough about how enjoyable it is to tie flies on. Now, for me, I just keep this crank down pretty tight because all I want to do is roll my flies over, inspect them. I'm typically not tying using rotary action to apply material to the flies. Uh, another setting, the bottom here, you can see there's a channel milled. You see that? There's a channel milled in the bottom of the actual jaws here, or the barrel that holds the jaws. So you can adjust the jaws up and down. Why you would want to do that? So that when you have a hook, let me get a hook. This will work. I've been tying flies. I don't know if you can tell I have my striper shirt on. We are going to Montauk later in October. So I've been tying flies for that. So you can see, you wanna have the shank of this hook aligned with this shaft. So depending on the size of the hook, size of the fly, you may need to be up here, up there. These are one-aught hooks I'm tying on. So probably about there. So then my hook shank is gonna stay in the same plane as that axle, which is what you want for tying these. So, get onto the, the technical details. Make sure we're all still in frame here. This claims to hold from a size 32 to a 8 or 10 aught, which is a gigantic range. Um, I don't know that... Actually, I haven't tied anything on here that <laughs> was really small yet. These jaws have a hook pocket, have two hook pockets. See if I can show you this. You see the hook pockets. So that you place a hook in there, they get locked in. The front one for smaller hooks, the rear one for larger hooks. So typically, I'm using eh, the front or rear. And my assumption is that when you're not using those you would use, there's a machine surface that's got serrations on it in front of the front little hook pocket. 
So, what we're going to try is I've got some size 26 hooks. I <laughs> couldn't find any size 32s, believe it or not. This is a TM Co. Nymph hook. Not that it really matters. It's incredibly small. Maybe, maybe you have to tie size 26 hooks, or um, you have to tie size 26 flies where you're from to get bit. I feel very bad for you if that's the case. <laughs> These are truly minuscule. Let me uh, show you. Hopefully the camera focuses. You gonna focus? Yeah. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little hook. So I'm gonna try to situate this hook. Man, I can barely even hold on to this thing. It's so small. In the jaws of this vise. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Smaller still. All right, so that's in there. Let you get closer, see if you can see it. So we got a size 26 hook in. I don't want to. If I bend down on that, I'm going to stick myself in the finger if it bends. So the edge of a bobbin. Yep, I can bend that hook right in half. No problem. So does it hold small hooks? Yes. Does it hold size 32? I don't know. Honestly, I I don't even know what a size 32 hook would look like. But if you need to tie relatively small trout flies, this will work. Now, let's go to the other end. So we're going to open this all the way up. Actually, I want to pull these jaws out so I can do that. Biggest, uh, I've got an, this is an A dot. Let me put that in the rear hook pocket. Oh man, yeah. Definitely gonna be able to clamp onto an A dot. If I make that a little bit tighter. A little bit looser. <laughs> See, usually you would not be messing with something this large. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe you will mess with something this large. There we go. That thing is stuck. I could probably bend that if I want. I'm not going to because God knows I'll end up getting stuck in the finger. But you could. Yeah, I could definitely bend that if I wanted to. You could pull on that thing all day with as much thread as you wanted to. And the only application I really see... Okay, I, I mean, there are lots of applications. Maybe you tie tuna flies. But something I see a lot is bucktails. So if you want to tie your own bucktails, this would be a great vice for that. You can just... Let's see if I can get the angles right here. I have to be tighter. There you go. You got your bucktails ready for the surf, and I could crank on that and bend it for sure. So, the great thing about this vise is you get something to fit in those hook pockets. Once it's in there, it is not going anywhere. So that is just, I mean, that's what you want. That is number one, you know, qualification for a fly tying vise. Does it hold hooks? And this, absolutely. Now, I bought this vice used, not gonna lie. These are very expensive. I think retail on a, there's crap stuck in here. Retail on a Barracuda right now, I think is $540. So, I mean, you're, to talk about comparable vices, you're talking about like a Renzetti Presentation 4000, which is a very nice vice. Uh, definitely different than this, definitely a little, a little smaller, a little, uh, little more compact in stature overall, which isn't a bad thing, uh, especially if you want to travel with it. Like, this thing is just monstrous. I don't know if I'd want to take it anywhere. But tying on it is so nice that I could definitely be talked into changing my mind. 
So, the only cons I can really think about with this thing are it's large. And if that's a problem, this is not the vice for you. Uh, if you want something that's rock solid that will crush down on just about any hook size you could possibly ever need and has, you know, full rotation, this is a great vice for the... I, I shouldn't say for the money. But when you get into, you know, two $300 and higher, there are... You only got so many options. You know, you could get Regal's. Regal's got that Revolution series of vices that are kind of rotational. They're not really true rotational vices. Not really true rotational vices, I don't think. I don't know enough about those. But lots of people love tying on a Regal. It doesn't rotate at all. But for me, I would need to buy the saltwater jaws for a Regal because I tie big flies. Like, these are all... These are all one aughts. Everything I'm tying right now and you know I tie lots of bass flies and like there's something sitting right here they're just articulated stuff and you know I tie big flies like more often than not so that is one thing that really put me off about Regal when I started looking at them they're great vices they hold hooks they're stupid easy to use like the one thing I love about them is there's no fiddling with the forcing cone it's boom squeeze hook in you're done that's all you got to do. And I think that's awesome. And I wish there was something in a true rotary vice that could mimic that. But this is what it is. And for me, my choice was either this or... I was looking at the Renzetti Presentation 2000 because the 2000 has a articulated arm right here. So you can adjust up and down the same way this does. And in the Renzetti, you can adjust the vice jaws like that as well. But it just gives you another easy mode of adjustment. Uh, my only other complaints, and honestly, I don't know. This vice is older, and I'm not complaining. It works great. But I would like to have a material clip here. Just so if I'm tying something, like for instance, we tie something articulated. I'm tying an articulated fly, and it's hanging off the back of the vice like that. Like that's, sometimes this is too far away. Like when this was one articulation shorter, I couldn't hang this back here. So if I had a material clamp right here, stick that fly to, that would be nice. So when I'm working on it, I can keep it out of the way. But especially when you wrote, what makes me insane is if you're working on something like an articulated fly and you're rotating it and it's just flopping all over the place. But that's neither here nor there. I'm sure I can slip a spring over there. That would not be hard to do. The pedestal is great. It's very simple. I'll show you. It's just a normal old Dyna King pedestal. Stupid heavy. Non-slip feet on the bottom. And this is not... Oh, jeez. Smacking the camera. I do not have the original bobbin hanger, unfortunately. But, you know, this works fine. So, all in all, especially if you can find a used one, would I recommend buying this brand new? Uh, if you absolutely have to have it, yeah, I would say go for it. If money is an issue, which, I've, man, there aren't many people that money isn't an issue for, myself included. Get on eBay. Get on Facebook Marketplace. Find yourself a used one because it's just like anything. You know, they lose half their value the instant somebody buys them. So I guarantee you there's a couple people out there that have got these sitting around that aren't using them. And... I'm going to say it's silly to buy a $500 vice and not use it. But, well, you know, every once in a while you got more money than cents. Happens to me all the time. So, for the money, if you can get a used one, fantastic. If, if I lost this or broke it or, you know, didn't have it tomorrow, I would be upset. But I don't think I'd be able to shell out 500 bucks for another one. Uh, I'd want to. Don't get me wrong, I'd want to. But there's just... There isn't always 550 bucks just sitting around extra, you know? <laughs> that is, that's, that's the facts of life. I would very much want to have another one. For sure. But I would probably have to find another used one, and... Yeah, it might take some time. But great, 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 great advice. I honestly, like I said, I honestly can't find anything wrong with it. Aside from the fact that it's big. And I didn't think, 
Originally, I was looking at that Renzetti Presentation 2000 because it's it's relatively compact. And if you wanted to travel with it, it wouldn't be any problem. But I'm so glad I went with this instead because it is just... It is a rock. It's awesome. And that's, you know, that's what a vice needs to be. So, there's my take on the Dino King Barracuda. Thanks for watching. Uh, you got any questions, comments, criticisms, death threats? Let me know.